Hi everybody, welcome to Julia at Home. Today's video is on teaching a foreign language in preschool and elementary homeschool. Um, and I teach Italian, so I'm going to share the resources I have for Italian, but the kinds of resources I have and the techniques I use can be used for any foreign language. And in fact, I may add more foreign languages in the next few years. If you don't know me, my name is Julia. I'm a homeschool mom of three. I have a second grader, a kindergartner, and a toddler currently, and I am pregnant with our fourth. Um, so this is really aimed at those younger years. When we get to middle school, high school, foreign language is going to look a lot different. And I haven't, you know, exactly decided what I'm doing with that yet, but I'm hoping to continue foreign languages with my children when they are older. First, I just want to address what my goals are in teaching a foreign language, in this case, Italian. And my personal goal is not to be fluent or to make my kids fluent. Um, and so if that is your goal, there are totally resources here that will be helpful for you. But I'm just putting it out there that my goal is just to introduce them to the language. Um, I would like to be somewhat conversational in some areas with them. But the, my main goal is to expose them to the language, hopefully make some connections in their little brains and have fun with it. Expose them to, I feel like different languages help you um, understand different cultures and how people can be a little bit different in the world. Um, and also, I really enjoy the Italian language. I think it is beautiful. And so I do it for me as well. Um, one note I do want to make is that I don't teach Italian as consistently as I would like. The goal is really to be doing a little bit every day um, and really even on non-school days. Um, and I'm just not there yet. But I keep trying and I'm going to share with you my resources because I still think they are helpful. The first resource I want to share with you, and this is a big resource, is Talkbox Mom. And I will have everything linked below. Um, this is not an affiliate link, although some of the Amazon links will be. Talkbox Mom is a subscription based service where you get, um, it's like a, was a physical box that may now be online, but each month that has a different theme in your language. And they have Italian, obviously they have um, Spanish and French and German and I think Hebrew and they have a lot of languages so I would go no matter what language you're thinking of teaching I would go peruse that because they might have yours and they also take suggestions they're coming out with new ones um, so you can also write to them and be like hey I want this language um, and I recommend that for those of you who do want to be fluent with your kids this is a really good resource this is um, it's really about using the language in your day-to-day -day life they work with other parents, specifically moms, it's Talkbox Mom, but in the um, country where that language is native to. So in this case, they, they talked to Italian mothers about, you know, with certain phrases that they use that all mothers pretty much use on a regular basis with their kids and translate how they would say that. Because um, sometimes there's like a, you could, you could take your dictionary and look up the literal translation and it doesn't really that's not really what the native speakers are saying. Um, so it's really great in that way. And they have challenges set up for each box. There's usually three challenges um, to practice and dive into the vocabulary that they give you. And they often give you some activities to do with it. Um, so I have mine, the boxes I've gotten, um, I've split up into these envelopes. There's some materials that are like wall charts and stuff that are too big to fit in here and those are elsewhere. But for example, this is the first bathroom box. Um, and so they often come with lists of vocabulary and they also have an app that I have on my phone where you can just listen to the pronunciation of these by the native speakers. So that's really, really helpful um, if you don't, if, if you, if you're not fluent, if you don't speak the language. I'm not going to go really in depth into each little Talkbox Mom thing because you can go check it out on your own, but it is a really helpful resource and they do encourage you to try to use the phrases regularly in your everyday life. And so I'm trying, um, again, not as consistent as I want to be, but you may be better than me at that. So I wanted to give you that resource is the first. Um, my caveat would be it is a little pricey. So if you are just starting out, maybe you have toddlers, um, or you're not sure about the language yet, I may not start with that because it is quite an investment. Um, but that I just wanted to share that because I do think it's a great resource. They also have, what you could do is get their phrase book. <laughs> Mine is on the shelf of the dictionaries. I have their phrase book as well and you can look up, it's just usable phrases for families. So um, let's see, this one is the blocks and it tells you how to say the blocks and let's play with your blocks let's make a giant tower please hand me a box 
a block rather. And so there's all different, I think there's like a section on diapering and all different good stuff in here. Um, there's like put on your coats and get in the car. Um, so you can buy this separately than the uh, subscription service. So you can do that if you wanna just try it out, check it out and have some useful phrases on hand. It is a phrase book of helpful phrases, but it's not a complete dictionary. So it does not have all the words that you would need in here, just to let you know, but it, it can be a really helpful tool for homeschool. Tiren Chiara, avete fame? Abbiamo pane alla olive. Do you remember what pane is? Blend. Olive, what do you think olive means? Olives. Olives, pane alla olive. Ishe? Si. Si? <laughs> La scodel bianca. Pane alla olive. Mm. Ti piace? Ti piace? <laughs> Benissima. The second resource I want to share with you, it's really a type of resource, is dictionaries. I would get yourself at least a dictionary for you. So I have this Oxford's Italian Dictionary. I don't think it really matters what brand. I've had this since college when I was studying Italian. I think I have other brands for Spanish and French around here too. Um, I just, it, if you're going to be studying a language at any level, you as the parent, this is really important. I mean, the number of times I've been like, oh, I need to look up that one word. Um, it's really helpful. And I also, I recommend getting children's dictionaries. I happen to have two. Um, I think this was like a used one I found a long time ago. Let's learn Italian picture dictionary. I think I found it at like a used book sale. So I picked it up. Um, and it's it's fine. I don't know if it's in print anymore. And then I also did pick up the Usborne Italian, um, First Thousand Words in Italian. They have a bunch of different, I know they have Spanish, pretty sure they have German, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident they have Hebrew as well. Um, they probably have French. Um, I am an Usborne consultant, so I will put the link below and that will be a affiliate link, I guess. Um, so yes, this is, um, I like this a lot because it's pictures, obviously, but it's also because the things are themed together. So, um, La Strada. So if I'm, if I'm wanting to go through like a certain theme with my kids, I would definitely go to a page or pages in this book that are relevant and make sure that I'm getting the vocabulary that I need. Um, and there might be things that I'm forgetting that are related to that. Um, La Factoria is the farm. So I find that really useful for this. And this is also really helpful, can be used for the, what I'm going to call Charlotte Mason picture narration <laughs> in language, in foreign language. And I'm going to come back to that in a little bit, but the picture dictionaries are really helpful for that as well. While I'm on the topic of dictionaries, I also wanted to talk about this series, 501 Italian verbs. They, they have them for other languages. As a, as a parent who's a non-native Italian speaker, this is really helpful to me. I wouldn't use this with the kids. I don't, I don't really go through conjugating with them. Um, I, I speak it and I will try to speak with the correct conjugation and hope that they pick it up. That's also how Talkbox Mom works, if you're wondering. Um, and yeah, but I'm not like gonna harp on them for using the wrong conjugation. Um, and it's not something I go over with them. Middle school and high school, that would be a different discussion. However, it's really helpful for me because I want to be speaking as correctly as I can. This next resource is actually one that I made myself and it's relatively new to our homeschool and that is our Italian calendar. So if you look back over some of my days in life, probably definitely circle time videos, you may notice I have a calendar um, where my kids count, we count and we move a ring for the day and it also has the season and the weather and the moon phase on it and um, we've been counting in English and Italian for several years now so my two older kids are pretty good at counting in both languages. I decided to add in a separate Italian calendar and I will include footage here of that calendar and us using it. I'm currently including the months, the current day, so instead of moving a ring and having all, all the days up there, we just put up the number after we count on our other calendar. And then I also have the days of the week on here so we can learn the days of a week in Italian. And I currently also have the season. Um, I'm hoping that blank space there is for weather and I just haven't made the weather cards yet. Um, but at some point I will make weather cards and we will also do the weather in Italian. 
This again is a somewhat recent addition to our homeschool, so the kids are still getting comfortable with it. I actually, just before filming this video, the last few days, finally reprinted some of the cards and laminated all of them, so it looks much nicer now than it does in some of the videos I've made, especially the, my most recent day in the life, but I'm excited they are now all nice and laminated. Uno, due, tre, quattor, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci, undici, dodici, tredici, quattordici, quindici, diecisei, diecisette, diciotto, diecinove. Oggi, oggi è diecinove. Qua mese. What is the What is the month? January. That's in English. In Italiano è gennaio. Gennaio. Okay. So diecinove. Chiara, can you find diecinove for me, please? They should be in order. Do you know what day of the week it is today? It's piano day. What day is piano on? Tuesday. In Italian, that's martedì. Martedì. Hold on a second. All right, let's put this one on. Just can you hold it? Can you put that back in its spot? After. Diciassette, then diciotto, then diciannove. Okay. Il diciannove di gennaio, uh, il giorno della settimana è martedì. I should have done a little, usually an accent there. I stagioni e l'inverno. This next category is one of my favorites, and I think it would also be a really good place to start with, like, say, toddlers. And you're just getting into it. However, I would make sure to look up pronunciation of things if you are not sure. This is children's books in Italian. <laughs> so there's some of these I actually found on Amazon. I kind of just browse online. There's not a lot physically here. Um, sometimes libraries will have something, but usually not much in Italian. There's probably a lot more for Italian and French in local libraries, also depending on where you live. Um, so I would check that out as well. They're just not for a lot for Italian. So I have some here. Um, I think Italian children's market is one place where I've ordered some. I will have that linked below. Um, okay. I'm just going to show you some of the stock I have. I think I missed some that are up there, but you can kind of get an idea. So these were for my oldest daughter loves the Lion King. And so I got her the Lion King in Italian. And this is Leo a soy amici which is leo and his friends so it goes through some animals and these are really like baby books so you can get like i mean my older kids still like them because it has really simple language if you think about it this is how we're one of the techniques we're using to teach our um, babies and toddlers how to speak our native language and so why not use it for your foreign language as well some eric carl here is an eric carl um, board book uh, Della testa ai piedi, and this is uh, from your head to your feet, from the head to your feet. I don't even, I can't remember what exactly it is in English. That's basically what it means, though. Um, <laughs> I found some of these Usborns. That's not my, um, this is Dovale, so where is, not, it's a little bit different than that's not my, but it's the same concept in Italian. Mio Rosetto, a little bear, um, and, ooh, and Cucciolo, which is puppy. I like these Elmer ones and you can find some others like this where it's in, it's bilingual. Um, so it's in English and Italian and I have Il Giornata di Elmer and Il Campo di uh, Elmer. Um, and these are really good because also if you're not sure what something means, this is also in English, then you can know for sure. <laughs> um, although the, the translations are not always exact, um, but it gives you, it gives you a good idea and they're just cute. And again, board books. These last couple are a bit longer, so I actually have the Grinch, and we haven't managed to get through all this in Italian. It's actually pretty long. Um, we have, though, with these. I really like these ones. So Julia Donaldson is one of my favorite children's authors. I have several of her books. I highly recommend A Gold Star for Zog, if you haven't read that. 
However, <laughs> I don't have that one in Italian. I haven't found that one yet, but if you see it, let me know. Um, Dove la mia mamma and la strega Rosella, which this is funny. I really like this is, um, oh, I'm blanking on the name in English. Ah, it's going to drive me crazy. It'll come back at some point, but it, it's slightly different. The wording is slightly different, um, but it's still, they try to make it rhyme. So, um, and this one's great because it goes through different animals. So there's that. Also some more Eric Carl that I have in non board book farm. Um, I'll put Piccolo Seme and Il Piccolo Bruco My Sazio. So, um, yes, we have read all of those at some point. We've read, I think we've read all of them at some point, but I'll go, I'll go over them and read them several times in a row. Um, not, not in the same day, but the same book in several different days or several different days or several different sittings, because I know that, especially the longer ones, my kids aren't understanding every word. And so I'm trying, I try to be animated. I try to point to the pictures, really any technique that you would use with a little toddler or baby to try to communicate to them. That this is what this means. You're going to use when reading these to your kids in a foreign language. As I was putting those back on, I realized I wanted to show you this one because it's just little, it's machines basically. Um, it's, it's got little wheels that actually move. So my son was playing with it and it's a little bit beat up, but I got that for my son. So it's a fun little one. Let's see it right there. Marita, quello è un? Elefante. Elefante. Mm. Quello è un elefante. Mia mamma non ha un lungo nasone, né zane ricurve, né grosse zampone. Anzi, le sue zampe sono, sono simili a, a mani. Okay, now, now that I've gotten those back on the shelf, I can move on to the next category of resources, and that is songs and poems. I love to include these in our homeschool. So I have several resources, and um, let me start with the physical ones that I have. These are the most useful. This is actually one of the very first resources I got when I started doing Italian with my oldest when she was a toddler. This is volume one and volume two, and they have, um, they have come with a CD, so it has lots of songs in it. Some of the songs are just in Italian. Some will be in English and Italian. And it goes through just common things. So it's like your family. So you're learning, you know, padre, madre, fratello. Um, I don't know if her sorella is in here, but that's sister. Um, so, so just some real basics. And then there's, a, it's kind of like talking about her day. And um, there's songs that go along with it. And so I've done several of the songs out of here. It has, I think this one has the colors. I mean, they're in the back. Um, yeah, the colors I've done with my kids. Um, so it's just a lot of good vocab for you to do with your kids, either reading the book. It's not really one that I read through all the way, um, but you can use the, I kind of use it as a jumping off source and I use these songs. And the second one goes through, it has like a page spread for each month. So it's more, um, activities and vocabulary that is tied to that month. Um, that's why it's called celebrating the seasons. So I really like these. These are a really good resource. Like if you could get, if you could get very few things, I would get one of these. I would get a dictionary for yourself and maybe a handful of picture books. And then, um, not like a couple picture books in that, in that language, and then just go from there. Um, and that's where I would start. These ones I also got, I think, from Italian's Children's Market, but this is Filistrocchi Italiane, Italian Nursery Rhymes, and it's just, it doesn't have the songs, it's just, like, lyrics. A lot of these are songs that you can find in other places. Um, and sometimes it has what it means. I don't know if it always has what it means. This is what the page does. And then um, these ones are um, basically, this is basically the same thing as that, except it has a CD, and it, it has them spoken it's like poems not sung um but it's it's got rhymes in it basically and this one is actually um fables and we haven't used this one yet but i i should it looks really cool it's got like um the three little pigs um pinocchio it has a couple that uh, like uh puss in boots i think aladdin um some of these i don't know what the translation is in Italian. So, um, yeah, 
So, so this could be a really fun resource too. Um, and this again, so this is from Junti Kids, which is a brand I've, I've got several other things that I think Italian children's market sells. I would look for, if you're not doing Italian, another like shop from that country or from Europe, even if it's a European country. Anyway, I would look for a source that specializes in that language. Um, because for most languages that you're going to study, you're going to find something, um, or see if you can find something from that country, um, to come to you. And the last important resource that I want to mention here is, um, actually I use YouTube and it's really helpful if you have an idea of some things to type in, in that language. So I would type something in, in Italian. If you type like this song in Italian, like in English, if I typed in like, the itsy bitsy spider in Italian. I'm not going to get as good results. And there's one for Italian specifically. There's the site is Cocole Sonore. I will have it linked below. I wanted to remember what it was. Um, I've I've used that site frequently. It has really great children's songs. Some of them have motion set to them. Um, there's some overlap with some of the songs and some of the other books, which is actually really helpful for me. I learn really well by ear, so I listen to it over and over again. I'll often type up the lyrics and then we'll teach it to my children. So um, a song that we are currently doing, we actually started before I got sick. We just picked back up with the song we were doing and it's Il Canzone degli Animi, anim, Animali. I'm trying to talk fast and I'm pregnant and I'm out of breath, so I am sorry. I will put a clip here of us singing the song. It's really fun. And that is from Cocole Sonore, including the little motions that we do. And just because most of you probably don't speak Italian, it's just about there's an animal that does this action. So it's like, there's an animal that slithers, there's an animal that jumps, there's one that sleeps. Um, and so we're doing the action of the animal. Another really broad fun category, there's a lot that goes into this, is games. So I think my favorites are the songs and the games. And here's some resources I have. So um, this is the same brand I was pointing out before, Junti Kids. This is actually a board book. This is um, The Farm. And it's just, it's got um, different things with what the names are. And then the part I want to show you is it has little cards. Um, not for everything in the book, but there's a good number of cards in each. And it's actually matching cards. So there's two of each. So this is like a jug of milk, um, a lamb. Um, and so they are matching cards. Um, and so we have played this several times. I also have, um, I have the farm and I have animals. They're more like wild animals. There's a lot of animals in both. <laughs> um, but we really like using them that way. Um, sure, there's other ways you could use the cards as well. Um, but they're a handy resource to have. I additionally have these Tombola games. This is like bingo. Um, however, my kids are not, we don't have all the vocabulary yet. So we haven't actually played these yet. I'm working up towards it by using the card, the individual cards as flash cards. And we're trying to learn as many of them, as many of them as we can before playing the game. So this one is nouns and this one's verbs. So I'm hoping by the end of this year, we'll at least be able to try the noun one. Um, and I, I think we'll probably start it before we have all of them down. But if we just tried it without knowing any of them, I think it would kind of be a disaster, not as fun. Um, but another option is to create your own bingo game. And there are also, we've used um, TalkBox. Mom has a couple resources. So um, their first box is like the food and snacks box. And so I was able to print out, they had free printables for a bingo game with some food items and also some matching cards with that. Also, if you do Montessori and you have classified cards, as long as you know what the various uh, vocabulary is, you can just use those and just use Italian instead of English and just make sure you're saying the thing as you're doing it. Also, if you're doing like a matching game or bingo, you can put phrases in it. So 
like where is um there is um can you hand me the but you can like practice whatever phrases you're using and have them say it as they're turning a card um and so it'll give you more practice in that too all right chiara oh good moment good moment Il leone. Oh. <laughs> this is fresh. My turn. Oh, let's see what this one is. Il gatto. Oh, meow, meow. cute. Il pesce. Yeah. <laughs> Il gatto mangia la pesce. <laughs> Il pesce, sorry. That's just funny. Il gatto mangia il pesce. Okay. Uh, Tear and stream. Oh, il gatto. Il gatto e il gatto. Benissima. Mm. In addition to those things where you might need to buy a physical game or at least have cards, there are games and activities you can do with nothing or just what you have around the house. So first would be Simon Says. If you know some actions in your foreign language and you know how to say Simon Says, so in Thai I'd say Simon DJ Salta, just jump. Um, you can play Simon Says and that's a great practice. I also, my kids really like the stop and go. Um, and I do it with different verbs. So corre is run. Um, and if I just say vai or andate, which are go singular and plural, they'll run anyway, but sometimes I'll, I'll tell them to dance or to, to jump or to spin. Um, and, and some of those are actually verbs that we did in the action box, the talk box mom. Um, and so those are really fun games to play. And again, for that, you don't really need any extra resources. Just Get yourself a dictionary, figure out the pronunciation. Usually if you have a smartphone or something you can get online, you can find the pronunciation of something if you don't know it already. So those are fun. There's also like what's in the box. <laughs> so you can have like this kind of like a Montessori sensorial thing where you could have some different objects that I would review. I would do the vocab with your kids beforehand, um, but put some objects in the box and see if they can guess what it is and then pull it out. Um, or if you do like the hidden game, where you've put a bunch of things out and then you cover it or you have them turn around when you take one away and see what if they can figure out what's missing. Those kind of things you can do in your foreign language. You can do bring me. Uh, we've done that a lot, especially with like plates and cups and stuff. I've, I've used that one quite a bit. Or um, bring me this or put this on the table or, or um, put this away or, you know, different, different variations on that again. All you need to do is learn the vocabulary for what you're trying to say, review it with your kids and use it. Another favorite with my kids is charades. And this is, it's not really technically charades, but we usually pick like a, usually we do animals because that's, that's the easiest thing that we know a lot of vocabulary for. And so they'll choose an animal they know the vocab for and act it out. And we'll have to guess in Italian. The key is you have to say it in Italian, but you could do, you know, charades where you write it out if you have readers. Um, or you could do Pictionary, a Pictionary version of it where they get it and they have to draw it and you're guessing in Italian. So there are just so many good options for games. And so it's one of my favorite things. And it's also something you can do cheaply. My kids love it. And they're such easy, like, so, um, one day this past week, we even played a game where we have a bunch of bean, bean bags that are all different colors. And I would just shout out a child in a color and have them throw me that bean bag. Um, and I said, throw me the color <laughs> um, in Italian. And uh, of course the toddler was also very excited to throw the bean bags. So it got a little crazy, but <laughs> they had a lot of fun doing it. An altro tricky one, ready? Il lupo. Do you remember what il lupo is? <laughs> Bene, dear, in il lupo. Yeah, my yeah. Movie. I can't forget my favorite dog. Il lupo, okay. <laughs> How about la giraffa? It is water. <laughs> Are you very tall? Look at you. Lungo. Uh, <laughs> See. Si. Oh, are you are you eating manja? Yeah. La giraffa manja. <laughs> One last thing you can do, and this is what I'm calling the Charlotte Mason picture narration. So um from the the little bit of research I've done on how Charlotte Mason taught foreign languages, which I'm not actually following, but at some point I did a lot of research in that and then decided to go a different direction. <laughs> However, um, there is a really good series by Celeste Cruz 
that I will link below a blog blog series. She does Italian with her kids. Um, the series from several years ago, but it's got really good info. Anyways, picture narration. Basically, you find a picture that has things going on in it, and the child or children will tell you in the language what they can see. So it allows them to use what vocabulary they have um, to do that. And I will do this occasionally. And this is what I was talking about. The picture dictionaries are really useful. And I'll also just use pictures from books. Occasionally, I like once or twice, I've printed out a picture to have them do this, but this is not something I do really often. I find that it works best after we've read a book several times. For example, uh, Dove la mia mamma talks about animals. And we also have been talking about like actions and things that they do. And so there's a page in here that we used. I think it was this one. We well, just asked the children to tell me what's happening in this picture, to point out the animals. And that's how I do it. Um, I don't think that's really how Charlotte Mason would do it, but I think it's an update of Charlotte Mason's method. <laughs> Io vedo un elefante. Si? Vedi il elefante? L'elefante è qui. Oh, l'elefante beve l'acqua. Si? Elefante beve l'acqua. E il scimmia piccolo. Piccolini scimmia. Uh, rana, si, sì, un rana. E nel acqua. Nel acqua. Um, let's see. Il pipistrello dorme. Il pipistrello dorme. Hey, I'm popping in from a few days later, and that's because I had an idea that I really wanted to share with you in this video, and I didn't think about it when I was filming, and that is to use lists. I'm a huge fan of lists. I make to-do lists, grocery lists, lists of things to clean, list of projects, and I could be doing those in Italian, or at least some of them. So this weekend, I'm going to start by making my grocery list in Italian. I feel like this is a good place to start because we do know a lot of food names, and the ones that I don't know, I can look up, and we often get a lot of the same foods, so it'll be good to know those ones. I think another good place to start could be a cleaning list, if you're going to do like a a list of rooms you need to clean because those are pretty easy to find too. So like I know Banyo is bathroom and Cucina is kitchen, so I may do that as well. But I just wanted to give you that idea, didn't want to forget it, and I hope it helps. Okay, so those are all my categories of resources that I have for Italian. If you have any other ideas or things you do for foreign language, please let me know in the comments below. I know there are some great programs online that I think would be great, especially for older kids. So if you have one you especially love and you want to share it with others, please, please comment. There are two things I want to talk about though. The first is I just want to talk about some ideas for topics. So Talkbox Mom, if you get that, each box has a topic in there already. So it's things like in snacks and food, um, bathroom, <laughs> actions, rooms around the house. I'm forgetting what some of the other ones are, but those are like general, it's like things around your house or that would, you would do on a daily basis. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna read to you this list of topics that I have typed up to give you some ideas in case you need some. So um, these are things that I'd like to expose my kids to in Italian. Kitchen and dining, animals, actions, rooms in the house, weather, the day, so that'd be like, waking up, the different meals, um, maybe um, uh, playing outside, things that we do throughout the course of the day. Um, let's see, sorry, bathroom, emotions, family members, and clothing. So there's of course a lot more vocabulary out there in the world. Um, and I, I keep meaning over summer to maybe do like an intense garden vocabulary one. So maybe this summer I will get to that and maybe I will share it with you when I do. Um, and so if there's things that are important to you in your life, then I would do that. Um, around Christmas, we learned to say Merry Christmas. And um, I forgot to mention, I also have Christmas songs. So I think they're still, even though it's past Christmas, I think they're still out by the piano, so they're not in here. But those are things I wanted to share just in case you needed some ideas there. The last thing I wanted to share is that as homeschool parents, part of the beauty of homeschooling is we're learning ourselves. So if you are interested in teaching your child a foreign language, chances are, if you're not already a native speaker, that you want to learn that language yourself. So I would work on teaching yourself separately from your kids in, as well. And, and I have been doing that. I did study Italian in college. I spent a summer in Italy. Um, so I, I kind of have a little bit of a heads up, but I haven't really spoken it since, since college. Um, 
So <laughs> I'm, I'm relearning it um, as I go. And so there's two things I'm, I'm using right now. The first is on my phone and it's Duolingo. And um, there are different apps you can use. So you may like other ones better. And if you do, you can let people know below. That one's been good for me. It's, I have the free version. You can do several different languages on it at once actually. So I'm doing it, I've been doing Italian on it for a while and I actually just started French which is really difficult for me to pronounce, but I keep trying. Luckily, my brother is fluent in French, so I keep asking him, is this how you say this? Um, so yes, um, Duolingo is something, ideally I'd be doing for a few minutes every day. That does not happen, but, and then Duo gets sad. Um, but I, I try to do it somewhat regularly. Um, and the other thing is just get yourself a book in that language. This is like a easy book. It's short stories in Italian. It's designed for, people learning Italian. Um, it's actually probably too easy for me at this point, but I wanted to start with something that I knew I could do. Um, this one also has like at the end of each chapter, it will have questions to make sure you're understanding what's happening and it'll have some um, uh, vocab highlighted there. So um, I'll link this below. They might have this in other languages in the series. I don't know. And this is volume one. So there's probably other volumes. Um, but I think after I do this one, I'm going to find like an actual book in Italian. Um, when I was in Italy, I read through, um, the fourth Harry Potter in Italian, which was fun. So like maybe finding a book that you've read in English and that you enjoy and reading that. Um, I do have my eye on one, that an Italian book about ancient Rome. Um, so there's also, I haven't had as much time for this recently, but there are also some great YouTube creators that are teaching people languages. So um, look up your foreign language and see if you can find some of them. I have a couple I like in Italian and I will link them below as well. And, um, there's all different kinds, but a lot of them will go through different vocab and grammar for you. Um, and I, I watched one who went through some ideas for some good books for beginners to read. So those are my ideas. Oh, I will also mention, sorry, <laughs> one last thing for the parents and teachers, um, is podcasts. So, um, there's slow news in, I think they have it in several languages. Um, and then, yeah, or if you can just read or listen to something that interests you in that language. So these are things that I could be doing more of, but they're ideas I wanted to share with you. And hopefully some of them you will enjoy and maybe dive into some language learning with your kids in your homeschool. Thank you all for joining me here today. Remember to hit the thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you liked the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Buonasera.